give you some of the latest headlines in the COVID-19 outbreak. The Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe has confirmed its first case of COVID-19. In a posting on Facebook, Chief Executive Melanie Benjamin says a band member living on the main reservation area on the west side of Mille Lacs Lake has tested positive. Some members of the Minnesota Nurses Association are testifying at the state capitol today. They're going to give lawmakers their firsthand view of what's going on inside hospitals during the COVID-19 pandemic. This coming as Minnesota reported the lowest number of deaths in two weeks. Nine people lost to COVID-19. There are now more than 16,000 confirmed cases in the state throughout this entire pandemic. About half have recovered in Wisconsin. There are more than 12,600 cases with 459 deaths. New Minnesota driver's license might finally be within reach. Today, 14 exam stations will open across the state for people who need to renew or maybe take a written test next Tuesday. Good news for teenagers. Most of those locations will open for road tests. There was an exam station that was supposed to open in Brainerd, but then this happened. Oof, a fire started on the roof of City Hall. Investigators think that some construction work caused it. Thankfully, no one was injured in that fire. We also have details on a condo fire in St. Paul last night. Fire officials say that it started on the 11th floor of this building right on Edgecombe Road. Crews evacuated three of the 16 floors. Officials say it is an older building, but it did have sprinklers, which helped control the fire. Investigators are still looking for a cause. President Donald Trump says he is taking a somewhat controversial medicine to ward off COVID-19 told reporters that he asked White House doctors for a prescription for hydro hydroxychloroquine to lessen symptoms in case he gets the virus. The president said he has no symptoms of coronavirus. He is tested regularly, and Democrats are saying taking that drug is reckless. Okay, what do you have to lose? So I have, been, I have been taking it for about a week, week for about a week and a half. Every day? At some point, every day. He's our president, and I would rather he not be taking something that has not been approved uh, by the scientist, especially in his age group and in his, shall we say, weight group, what is morbidly obese, they say. FDA has cautioned against using the malaria drug outside of hospitals because it can cause heart problems. White House released a memo from the president's doctor saying the potential benefit from treatment outweighed the risks. Some encouraging news about a vaccine for COVID-19. It's little, little encouraging news anyway. Drug maker Moderna, which partnered with the National Institutes of Health, reported some promising results from a very, very, very small study. Early participants did develop antibodies after receiving two doses of the trial vaccine. If all goes well with continuing steps of the trial, which is a long way to go, makers do say it could be available as early as January. An Eden Prairie man is back home with his family after spending almost two months in the hospital fighting COVID-19. He spent one of those months on the ventilator. Researchers are still trying to figure out how Rick Huggins got so sick in the first place. He was an otherwise active, healthy 51-year-old man. He started feeling sick right around St. Patrick's Day. He had a bad cough, a fever of 105 degrees that just wouldn't break. His wife insisted on taking him to the hospital where he tested positive for COVID-19. Rick told his family and the staff at Bethesda Hospital was going to intubate him and that it'd just be a day or two before they got to talk again. It took an entire month. It affected his kidneys, liver, lungs, and he had water around the heart. I had uh, nine transfusions, uh, dialysis three times, 30 days on a ventilator. It's been heartbreaking to see that these patients cannot be visited by their families. M Health Fairview's Dr. Far Ikramudin helps decide whether patients are healthy enough to be discharged. You need two negative COVID tests and then you get to ring a bell when you leave. Rick's wife said that she cried the whole drive to the Bethesda to pick him up. Meanwhile, researchers at the U are looking for the why. In Rick's case, it could be genetic, it could be environmental. There's still a lot to learn.